All right, we're playing the 50K PLO today. Uh, probably the, you know, the most exciting event of the year. The 25K had a better structure, like a slower structure, but um, 50K is bigger buy and It's going to be smaller field. And I think whenever the stakes are higher, the kind of intensity is a little bit higher. And I like that. So uh, I'm excited to get going. I had one of those nights where I slept, I don't know, too long. And so I'm a little groggy, um, but I'll be fine by the time I get there. Getting a late start because I... I slept longer than I expected to, but I wanted to go in a little bit late today. Um, you know, it starts, it starts too deep. Honestly, I think this ant, the 25 KPLO too, I think they need to start shorter. Um, and then the levels can go up a little slower to, to compensate, but it is, it is what it is. I'm going to show up a little bit late and, uh, just be ready to play. So keys for today. One, I want to be tight ish, aggressive preflop. I think getting pots heads up. Uh, so doing more three betting than I otherwise would, I think is, is very valuable. I really like playing heads up pots as opposed to multi-way pots. Um, I just think there's more room to maneuver. So stay disciplined, but but willing to put in some aggression. I think that also works because, I mean, the higher the buy-in, obviously, you know, players who can afford the higher buy-in are more likely to play the higher buy-in, but there's still gonna be some, be some people who wanna play because it's a good event and they'll, they'll stretch a little bit and um, have more pieces sold and be a little bit more timid, I think. And so, Anytime you can increase the intensity in spots like that, uh, increase the pressure for them, I think it works out better. And then the second key is just to hand read. Um, I spoke about this in the 25K PLO, but just not, not just projecting, not either A, projecting how I would play onto them, or B, just trying to play my range in a way that's balanced. Um, I think I wanna be unbalanced uh, in favor uh, in spots, well, in most spots, essentially, because I think I can make some pretty good assumptions about where people will um, underfold or overfold and under bluff or over bluff. And if you can identify those, but you're not taking advantage by adjusting your game, then what's, what's the point of identifying those? So that's going to be my two goals for today. Um, and I guess we're gonna have a third key is just to have fun. It's, it's a, it's going to be a really fun event. And I think I will play my best if I'm, I don't want to say not taking it seriously because I'm obviously going to take it seriously, but if I'm relaxed and having fun, um, not worried about making a mistake. You know, at the end of the, uh, the 25K PLO tournament, uh, in that video, you know, I kind of agonized over a play that I made at the end, um, which I still don't know uh, if I like it or not, but it was, a, it was a play for like, I don't know, 10 big blinds in EV. It's like nothing. Um, it's just that when you get deep in the tournament, every big blind feels like a lot of chips because it is a lot of chips, but just trying to maximize my EV and not beating myself up over potential mistakes or worrying about making potential mistakes. I think that's going to serve me well today. So that's the plan. Uh, I'm going to go get ready and, uh, and get to it. All right. So you don't know this, but we, so I tried another mic the other day and for the majority of the ride, it was super distorted. It basically works while I'm not in motion, but if the car's moving, it's a disaster. I ordered another mic that probably also won't work, but it was supposed to be here yesterday and it's not here. So we're dealing with the uh, subpar audio quality while I'm in the car. And I'll just keep these car segments short. I don't have too much to, to say today anyways. Um, I'm just looking forward to playing. It's 4.15. Um, the tournament started at one. So getting there at like, I think actually the perfect time for where the blinds are still low enough that I have, I don't know, probably 150 big blinds to start or something, um, which yeah, I think that's perfect. Starting with 500 is just silly, I think. I mean, it's, you could treat it as like a warm up, but the pots are just too small to be a, a very big deal. It almost feels like, I don't know, just an opportunity to mess up <laughs> more than anything else. Uh, so yeah, on my way, uh, looking forward to getting the action. This is gonna be a fun turn. Hey everybody, off to, um, I mean, a good start, but it's still like, I, I showed up at, with 300K chips and lines were 600, 1200. So it's still pretty early, pretty deep. 
Um, I really only played, I played like three hands and only one of consequence where um, I hijack raised to 3K at 1,500, so min raise. I made a 10K on the button. Uh, pot would be 11.5, but I just didn't feel like bothering. Um, so I made a 10. Uh, he calls. I have ace, king, 10, deuce with nut diamonds. Um, flop is queen, seven, four, three diamonds, so not bad. Uh, he checks. I bet 6K uh, into, what, 20, uh, 24, uh, which I think is good. Like, you should use small sizing there. Um, and I think a couple of strategies could work. I could bet with most of my range, um, or you, I could do a lot of shit. Like, a lot of things work there, but I would not use a big sizing. Um, it's really tough for him to play against a small sizing out of position um, with three streets to come on a board like that where, you know, Ace of Diamonds is such a key card, he's often not going to have it. He raised to 13,200, uh, so effectively a min raise. This felt very tournament-y to me. Um, like, you don't see that sizing in a cash game. Uh, I mean, you don't see a lot of raising in general, but effectively, like, I felt like he had a, a hand that, like, could have maybe called or just barely couldn't call, but didn't want to. Like, I thought he was bluffing most of the time. Um, so I just call, but call is the standard play anyway. So he has basically, like, three hands, three types of hands here when I hold my hand. He's either got a bluff with no equity, uh, he's got top set, queen, queen, or he has, like, a king or jack high flush. Um, I did not have the king of diamonds, so uh, I had ace ten of diamonds. Anyway, so against that range, you just want to call. You want to let him. Well, you want to see what develops on the turn. So turn is the offsuit four. Uh, he checks. So now he's like I think he would check basically his full range here. So he's got the same range that he had on the flop. Um, I still think I want to play passively because. Like, if he has queen-queen, I certainly don't want to bet-bet, uh, obviously. And if he has even, like, the jack-high flush or the king-high flush, he might fold to a bet-bet. Probably not, but maybe. Um, and if he has a bluff, I want to keep him in. And I, like I said on the flop, I thought it was mostly bluffs. Um, so I check. River is uh, 6. He bets 40k into 50k. It's like 52 in the pot, I think. Or no, 50,200 in the pot. Um... Why is there 200? I guess it must have just been 50k in the pot. For some reason, I remember counting the pot and it was 50,200, but it couldn't have been. So, anyways, um, he bets 40k. Um, and here, you know, he's got a bluff, and then it doesn't matter what I do. Or he has king high flush, in which case I'd like to raise, but he still might fold. Um, or he's got a full house, and I definitely don't want to raise. Um, I think it is close, really. I, I think it's very close in my spot. I ended up just calling. Um, and he mucked his hand, he had a bluff. Uh, so it didn't matter what I did, uh, as long as I didn't fold. Um, and so I won that pot. So, I mean, I, I probably have like 350K from my 300K starting stack, so nothing significant, but I feel good. Um, like, I, I felt like I was pretty sure that he had a bluff that hand. There was another hand that I was not involved in where a lot of money went in and I was like 90% sure somebody was bluffing and it turned out that they were. Um, so I'm happy about I don't know, my feel of the, the situation so far and feeling confident. Um, but it's a tournament, anything can happen. All right, so I gotta be quick because I'm rushing to dinner. I <clears throat> um, actually got it all in three times uh, during those levels. So the first, um, it's like 1K, 2K, there's an open to, there's a limp, an open, and then a raise to 9K, I call ace, jack, jack five with diamonds. Uh, button three bets to 35k everybody calls so there's 150 in the pot almost 145 in the pot flop is jack nine three two clubs one diamond uh, first player checks the initial opener pots for you know 140 he has like 180 total i shove fold fold he has queen queen eight four with clubs um, turn is the ace of clubs. River is the ten of clubs. He actually made a straight flush. Um, 
with Jack Lennon clubs on the fall. Uh, so I lost that. I was down to 120. Uh, at at 1,500 blinds, I open under the gun, King King 7-5 with diamonds, uh, under the gun plus one calls. Everybody else folds. Flop is 10, 8, 4, rainbow, one diamond. I check. He bets 7K into 20-ish. Uh, like 19, yeah, 20. I call. Uh, turn is a deuce, bringing two diamonds. I check. He pots. He, he bets 30. It wasn't pot. Uh, so he bet 30 into like 34. I shove for 105 because if I'm beat, I have a lot of outs. If I'm not beat, then he's going to have like some combo draws that I'm doing really well against, like Queen Jack 10 9 or. Uh, that maybe turn diamonds. I mean, I'm not doing fantastically well, but pretty well. And also just playing the river out of position with pot size, like stack size of less than pot, is just going to get uncomfortable on a lot of rivers. Um, so I'd rather get it in now, protect my hand, you know, n not play the river out of position. Um, he calls, he has jack, 10-10-9, uh, no flush draw. Um, so he flops huge, uh, but I river a six off suit. And I double up to like 220. Um, I was up to like 250 when this hand happened. So I raise under the gun, ace, ace, deuce, three with clubs. Under the gun plus one calls. Folded the big blind to repots to, you know, 37K or something. This is at 15, three blinds. Um, I repot to whatever, 120. Um, fold. He calls with uh, 40K behind. Uh, and do a pot of, you know, 250, 260. Uh, flop is king, 10, 3, all diamonds. He shoves for 40, I call. He is queen, jack, 10, 8, hearts and spades. Um, turn is a 6. River is a queen, so I lose. Um, and now I have 85k on dinner break. So, gotta run to dinner. Uh, hoping this next uh, few levels go goes better for me. All right, we just busted that bullet um, with, I mean, I had 10 big blinds. I got all in with, it was actually pretty nice. I got, I could quadruple up with uh, Jack Jack 8-6 against Ace Ace 8-6 and King King Jack 4, um, which with the pot odds, I mean, it was a pretty good situation. We got to fold somebody out pre, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna re-answer now. So this, uh, this few levels, not a lot of eventful hands. Won a couple small pots, lost a couple small pots. But all the pots are pretty big now. Blinds are up to 3K, 6K. And, you know, starting stacks 300K, which is what I bought back in for. Um, hand came up, I open cutoff with King, King, 10, 8. Um, diamonds. Small blind, 3 bets. So I open to 15K, he 3 bets to 51. I call. <clears throat> so now there's... Um, what is that? One, whatever. <laughs> it's like 115 in the pot. Um, and I have about 250 behind. Uh, flop is queen, jack, deuce, rainbow, one diamond. Um, he pots, I shove, very clear shove. Um, this is not like a aces only to three bet spot. He's gonna have a lot of like jack, 10, nine, eight, and ace, queen, x, x, so. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy with the flop in my in my hand. Um, we get it in. He has ace, ace, king, four. He has my diamonds covered, I think, but um, turns a nine for the straight. Uh, and river is unfortunately a ten. So uh, was looking good to double up, but instead bust it out <clears throat> with five minutes left in the level. And so this is the last level to rebuy. So I'm going to use my final reentry now and get back in there. And hope for the best. You know, we're we're coming, gonna come back to 4K, 8K blinds with 300K stack. So, relatively short uh, poker, 
you know, I'll just do what I can and can't control what I can't control. Um, so looking forward to getting back in there, uh, despite, you know, it not being a good day thus far. So <clears throat> it's a pretty brutal tournament. Um, I got up to like 350K on my last bullet and then um, had a, it was 4K, 8K, a small blind limp. So I, I have ace, ace, seven, six, nut spades. Um, I pot to 24, he pots to 72. Um, I repot to, what was that, 216, um, he calls. With, and we have like 80K behind. I guess I was down to more than, okay. I was closer to 300 after the ante and everything. Um, it's like 80K behind. Flop is 10, four deuce, two hearts, one spade. He shoves the 80K in, I call. He has ace, king, eight, four, uh, nut hearts, second nut spades. Turn is a six of spades. Uh, River's a queen of hearts. So I am out uh, for my third bullet. I mean, I, I like how I played. Um, it would have been fun. This would have been a really fun tournament to run good in, but it was not meant to be. Uh, so heading back to the car and, uh, I mean, I guess I'll talk, uh, car audio is so bad. Maybe I'll uh, talk to you at home. All right, we're back home. It is midnight. Um, you know, for how poorly it went and how big the event was, uh, and how expensive a day it was, I don't feel too bad. Um, Mainly because, I mean, if you've watched these by now, you know that I'm mostly focused on how I played. And I, I think I played well today. I didn't think, <clears throat> not that I played fantastic because there were just not very many interesting spots, but I think I played almost all the spots that I got in well and um, got my money in good a few times and just didn't work out. And that's, that's PLO. Um, the structure was really fast. So, uh, you know, we got short fast and just got to win some all ins. It wasn't meant to be for me today. I feel fine. What I'm what I'm struggling with a little bit is what I want to do um, next. So I had gone into the summer thinking I'm probably just going to play four events: um, 25k heads up, 25k PLO, 50k PLO, and 50k Poker Players Championship. Um, then I started playing. I mean, I played the online events. I, I final table that online event for 50k, um, which was nice. I don't know, I, I was making these vlogs, you guys were liking them, I was having fun playing, and I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll play a few more. So I played the 10K Dealer's Choice, that was a fun one too. Um, went deep, but didn't cash, you know, bubbled that one. I don't know, it seemed like maybe I was going to play a bunch, and I was looking at the schedule and and thinking about playing a lot of them. And I've been struggling with the last couple of days, so I've been thinking about whether or not I want to do that, but I haven't given it much thought because I knew I had the 50K PLO coming up, I knew I was going to play that. I figured, why don't I see how I feel after that? Um, and now it's after that and I have to see how I feel. And, uh, I'm honestly torn. I'm not sure what I want to do. What I like, I'm not really sure why I want to play the tournaments, if I want to play the tournaments and why, um, if I'm being honest, a, a part of it, like a big part of it is, um, making these vlogs because, you know, during the, during the year outside of the WSOP, I don't have a lot of opportunity to make content like this. Um, and I know it's popular and, and, you know, my YouTube channel is something I put, I wouldn't say a ton of energy and, and blood, sweat, tears into, but it's something I really uh, care about growing. And um, this is like an opportunity to do that. But that said, tournaments, like it feel, the next tournament is 10K, that, that I would play is 10K, uh, do seven triple draw, which is actually a fun tournament, but it feels like, um, I don't know, after busting three bullets in the 50K, it just feels kind of small and slow. <laughs> So I'm not feeling that excited about it. I am like the idea of getting back to uh, working on Run It Once and working on my my poker game in general and hopefully finding some heads up online matches. Like that sounds more exciting to me than playing um, some more tournaments. So I don't know. That's where I'm at right now. My sleep schedule is all messed up for that at the moment. Um, but that can that can be fixed. And yeah, I'm not really sure how I feel. So I'm, I guess, going to contemplate that for the rest of this evening and, and tomorrow. The, um, 
The triple draw starts tomorrow, but I could just register on day two, which is two days from now. So I, I could take all of tomorrow to think. Um, and obviously I could play that without having made a decision about the entire summer. But yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm not, you know, I'm not that bummed about the result. Honestly, I get, I get more bummed when I feel I played something questionably and or I get close and then bust out. So like a deep run, even if I cash and then like, like have a big stack and going in the final 12 or something and then lose it. Um, that's when I get really bummed busting like three stacks right away, <laughs> getting in good for the most part. Like I, you know, whatever. And yeah, that's, that's that. So not feeling too bad I'm trying to decide what to do with my life. And, um, Oh, as far as my keys for today, I mean, I, I play, I don't know. I like really didn't have many interesting spots uh, all tournament. And um, I think I played fine. Did some good hand reading in the few spots that I had uh, the opportunity to hand read in. And um, yeah, that's that. That's that. <laughs> um, thanks for watching these. I appreciate it. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for the feedback. And uh, I'll see you next time whenever that is.